Ladies and gentlemen, let's Red Gaming Tech .com video. We're going to be further discussing the Wii U. Now, there have been a couple of stories that have come to light. One from an EA engineer, and he has said that basically the Nintendo console is, and I quote, and I quote, I'm sorry, crap. And um, have been further quotes from an industry analyst, and they have said that Nintendo are in a world of trouble. So we're going to discuss that one first. Michael Patchter, who was recently speaking on ABC News, now he is from Wedbush Morgan and they are, and he is an industry analyst. He said that Microsoft, uh, sorry, that Nintendo is at the bottom of a huge mountain with a huge uphill climb. He also said, and I quote, with PS4 just $50 more than the Wii U, I mean, why would anyone buy a Wii U unless you have to play Nintendo games? Another quote he gave was, I think they're in a world of trouble right now. Publishers are really excited about supporting the Xbox One and PS4, but they didn't really say anything about the Wii U. He also said, if you see publishers follow EA, if you see Activision pull support, if you see Ubisoft support pull support, then Wii U becomes a Nintendo-only gaming device, which is what the NES was. And they are not going to sell well if they don't have games like FIFA and Battlefield and Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto. Nintendo waited two years too long to launch a competitive system with the PS3 and Xbox 360. By the time they launched the console, which by the way stacks up really well, the other two guys passed them by. So I think Nintendo will become a distant third in this console race. Meanwhile, an EA software engineer by the name of Bob Summerwill... Um, has criticised the Xbox 360, uh, sorry, the uh, Nintendo's Wii U, even more. I don't know why he's with the misspeaking today. Sorry, guys. Um, he pretty much put it completely and utterly on blast and started with the sentence, the Wii U is crap. He said, less powerful than the Xbox 360, poor online slash store, weird tablet, Nintendo are the walking dead at this point. Nintendo platforms have always been at poor revenue streams uh, for p third parties. Only Barry and Z uh, Zelda make money. Nintendo are still operating like it's 1990. They should have done a Sega and offered Mario and Zelda as PS4 slash Durango exclusives. Obviously, uh, he's referencing the fact that Sega now dropped out of the console market uh, with the Dreamcast. They basically said, okay, enough guys, we're going to tap out and we're just going to make software now. In fact, he even said about the hardware, and um, this is reference to how they built it, Sony, MS, Apple, Google are all following the same playbook, standard, powerful hardware with a focus on software and services. Instead, they make this awful console. And Will Street U, just stop it. Just make good games. He also discussed about the Wii U development uh, from EA, of course. And he said, yep, we've got plenty of problems right now. But the Wii U isn't where the family slash casual market is. It's on mobile slash tablet now. He even said, it's utterly intentional decision to focus our resources on markets which actually matter, like mobile and Gen 4. Interestingly enough, Gen 4, in case you guys hear of it, it basically means PS4 and Xbox One. It's how sub-publishers slash developers have decided um, to label this generation of next generation of consoles, shall I say. In other words, the PS4 and Xbox One, I'm not quite sure what they called it that. Um, obviously, it's not exactly the fourth generation by any stretch of the imaginations, but whatever. So, yeah. Um... This is a really odd situation for Nintendo to be in. Previously, they had absolutely ridiculous success with the Wii, with the original Wii. And now, of course, they're struggling to get any momentum at all. So I guess the question is, what are they really going to do? There have been numerous pieces of news from them, uh, including the fact that they are working on super, se uh, super secret titles, the fact that they want to really start pushing the development of their own games and so on. But the problem is, I think many people will agree that if you're not a massive Nintendo fan right now, you basically are not willing, most likely, to buy a Wii U. If you're not into Mario and Zelda and the standard Nintendo franchise, this is something I've been saying for a while now, why would you buy a Wii U? It it really is to the point where 
I've been reading both sides of the coin and the arguments um, have been pretty persuasive for both sides. One argument from Nintendo uh, fans or people supporting uh, the Wii U at least, or at least arguing for the Wii U, is quite simply that they believe that, you know what, we've got, they've got so many fans already, it's fine. And to be fair, Nintendo have an absolute massive cash surplus. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I think it's around six to seven billion US dollars. Um, apparently at one point it was around 10 billion, but obviously it's been taking numerous hits. However, the 3DS is finally picking up some momentum. You've got some really good games, of course, on the 3DS right now. And so most people are saying, well, even if they could just weather the Wii U storm, they just need to get to the point where the PS4, Xbox One are out. They can release another console, whatever that will be called, um, and then done. Please don't call it Wii, you know, Wii Free or something like that. Please just, just don't do that, Nintendo. I'm begging you. Retire the Wii name, please. Um, and that's all there is to it. But to other people, they've said, look, the problem is right now, Nintendo are getting to the point where they're becoming less relevant. One of the really big concerns um, from both sides is we know that Apple are toying with the idea of releasing a console. Google have basically, there are rumors all over the internet right now that Google are working on an Android-powered console. We don't know the specifications. We don't know what type of market share it's going to have in terms of what market's even going to inhabit. Is it going to try to take on the PS4 or is it going to be more an OIA type of console? The thing is, even if it's an OIA type of console, one has to remember that that's still eating into market share. For example, you may say to yourself, well, the OIA and the PS4 and Xbox One are completely different markets. You know, Xbox One is competing with PS4 and OIA is not competing with either. You have to remember that's not necessarily the case. One is... One point that I'd always like to make is that people only have a finite space under the TV, they only have a finite amount of games they can play, and they only have a finite amount of cash. For example, let's say that you were to buy a PS4, just for example. You may then buy the Oya and say to yourself, that's it, casual games are taken care of with the Oya, just for example, PS4 is taking care of all my main games, that's it, not interested in Nintendo or Microsoft. Simple as that. Um, and so every device on the market in one way or another is actually eating into the share. I'll give you another perfect example of this. Um, and this is something I deal with all the time because I'm pretty busy. Um, let's say that you have 24 hours in, hours in a day, which obviously you do, but let's say you're working, you have either class or working or whatever you're doing, maybe you do both. Um, obviously some people have family, other people don't, but they're studying on the side or doing whatever else. The bottom line is you only have usually a certain amount of leisure time. Therefore, sometimes you have to make a decision, especially when it comes to the evening time, say eight o'clock. You could say to yourself, do I read a book? Do I watch a movie? Do I play a game? And even if you were to play a game, for example, let's just take gaming into the into the into into it for a second. Let's say you have two MMOs. Which one do you play? Do you play Guild Wars or do you play World of Warcraft? In other words, you only have a certain finite amount of time. And so, even if we were to look at, say, Call of Duty and Guild Wars, even though, technically speaking, neither one are competing on the same market share, you know, it's not like it's Call of Duty and Battlefield, but still, they are competing in terms of your time. And it's even more the case, in my opinion, at least, with consoles. And so it's a really difficult decision uh, Microsoft, uh, Sony, and Nintendo are going to have if then we have even more competition from Google. And remember, if Google jump in and or Apple jump in, it's going to be a really just anyone's ball game because... Sony, in my opinion, have a really good console. I'm not going to dispute, in my personal opinion, they've won the architecture war. Um, we're going to have to see just how the cloud does with Microsoft, but personally speaking, th and they could actually implement that with the PlayStation. But the base architecture, PS4 wins. It's that simple. However, they have massive... 
um, disparity in terms of the amount of cash compared to the other two. Uh, Nintendo have huge cash reserves, and Microsoft, well, it's Microsoft. There's not really much else to say other than it's Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft are very much like Google in that respect. It's not like they cannot physically go broke, because that's, you know, I don't like to say never, but for Google, for Google to go broke, or for Google to run out of cash, or Microsoft to run out of cash, it's very unlikely, and therefore they can they can afford to throw a lot of money into this thing. I mean, look how much money they've invested, millions upon millions, almost a billion, in a data center, and apparently there's actually um, plans for them to expand on that, and that data center is going to be used for the Xbox One services as well as Azure as a, as a whole. In other words, they've got the cash to to really play with. And although Nintendo have this huge cash reserve, and that's a good thing, the 3DS is selling better, that's a good thing. They are doing well in the software side of things, that's a good thing. But ultimately, they cannot let themselves become, in my opinion at least, irrelevant. Because the thing is, you have one generation of console where, let's say they become weak, let's say they become weak in terms of the mind of the gamers, so in other words, there's some of their market share starts to drop, Google jump in or Apple jump in, whichever one of you know, whichever one you want. Um, and then what? Then basically, my, uh, Nintendo are trying to compete against three other competitors, and it becomes really tricky. However, some people are writing off Nintendo too much, in my opinion. One would argue that sure, they don't have the Call of Duties, they don't have Grand Theft Auto. On the other hand. It's also worth noting that, in my opinion, at least a lot of the people who buy Nintendo stuff aren't buying it with, say, Call of Duty in mind. They're buying it with the new Marios. They're buying it with uh, Zelda. Nintendo have recently commented that they don't believe that they're oversaturating the marketplace of Mario games. They don't believe they're doing it with Zelda games. But I'd like to ask really and honestly how many of these games can they realistically put out sure one could argue that they could have say oh i don't know luigi's mansion hell they could have they could bring back mario paint they could do all of the stuff but then mario is just basically a figure so why don't they start doing it with other characters the reason of course is because mario is now becoming a cash cow um and I don't necessarily know if I like that in some ways because it starts to water down to me, Mario. Um, they are putting out, of course, Melee, uh, which of course is going to be really popular. I think that's really good that they're putting out another Smash Brothers and so on and so forth. The problem is they just don't want the, their console to only be a Nintendo-only device because I question how likely it is that next generation gamers, or shall I say, gener uh, the generation of the next gamers, so in other words, you know, say kids are growing up, whether they're going to want a Nintendo system, or whether they're just going to go with the, the standard affair. In other words, they can't, they can't let themselves fade into obscurity, and I'm not saying they will do in the next year, but it's certainly something to think of, because when you're coming against these huge giants, um, with absolute mass massive, massive R&D budgets, huge global inf uh, infrastructure. Sorry, guys, um, I've got a bit of hay fever, so it's making speaking a little bit interesting. Uh, huge global inf infrastructures, everything else. It's an absolute pain in the ass for Nintendo to really start to strive forward. I think another problem as well is much like Nintendo's... Um, past in terms of the original Wii may have helped them. Now the Wii U is starting to kind of drag them down because there's becoming a lot of bad press. And this is much like happened with Microsoft. I mean, you all saw just how quickly everyone just jumped on the Microsoft bandwagon. And right now, I don't really see that much good news posted from Nintendo. Sure, there is the odd bit here and there. There is the odd you know, there are games in development and so forth, but a lot of the third-party announcements and so on are really key, uh, low-key to the ground. Ubisoft are still supporting them. They still have got some support there. Indie developers are definitely starting to jump back onto the Nintendo bandwagon. Nintendo are starting to make it easier for indies to actually um, write and develop for their system. That's good. But 
at the same time, there's got to be more. Um, I think a lot of people were expecting a lot more with the Wii U controller as well. I don't actually own a Wii U, I'll be honest, but I know a couple of people who do. And all I hear from them is that the Wii U controller isn't really what they wanted. Uh, they said that it's actually a pain in the butt in some respects because it just doesn't really work as well as they thought. If they look down on the screen, because a lot of the games that really seem to use it, you have to look down and then you die or whatever's happened sort from Zombie U apparently. Obviously, I suppose your mileage may vary, maybe that doesn't affect you or whatever, but it's just something to think of. I... Not really sure um, what I'd like Nintendo to do right now. I think I'd like them just to try and try and get out of the situation the best they can. I think the best option they could do is really weather the storm and prepare themselves for another console launch. I think the problem is though they have to keep the Wii U out here for a while because it's not exactly been out for a what for a long time, has it? And so it's got to be at least a couple more years. The good news is, however, if they were to release in say two years' time a new console, and I just pull two figure two years out of my ass, and I was it could be one year, it could be three years, it could be four years, it could be five years, who knows? But let's say two years, technology would have moved on to efficiently enough where they could launch a console that is cheaper than the PS4 and going to be more powerful than the PS4 simply because hopefully as well they'll go with the x86-64 architecture as well because let's face it it would make things a hell of a lot easier for everyone uh, involved. There have been some really interesting and conflicting reports regarding the specifications of the Wii uh, U. Some people have said that it's really powerful uh, in terms of the GPU and absolutely awful in terms of the CPU. Other people have said that the GPU isn't quite as good as what it what they expected. Um, there have been some conflicting reports in terms of memory. We know that there's one gigabyte available for developers, but some people are saying that apparently Nintendo are trying to get this um, improved and apparently they want it to be like more more like 1.5 and upwards they're going to increase the amount available after a system update because there's two gigs total and so they're going to be doing some um basically some efficiencies one of the reasons it takes so much memory is because of the second screen and the operating system if you have bits and bobs as well it'll be very curious to see what nintendo can do on that front so this is a particularly doom and gloom but it is an interesting uh, turn of phrase. and I don't really think that the analyst of Michael is really telling us anything that's new here. Most people would agree that it's not really a good thing that EA have said, paraphrasing them, but they're just going to be looking at the console's viability, and it's down now for Nintendo to say, oh, hi, guys, we're making money. And why would you? I mean, to be honest with you, let's just be... Let's just be honest here. You are not a charity. At the end of the day, your developers, your your suppliers, everyone involved needs to make money from that console. Simple. And let's face it, if you develop a game, you spend, say, 30 million or 40 million developing a title now on the Wii U, and you only make 15 or 20 million back, you're in negative. It's that simple. And it's not like your developers, it's not like your programmers are going to say, well, sure, I understand that the game didn't sell that well. You could just pay me half my salary. I understand it didn't do too well. No, they're going to want all of it. The same as the marketing firms, the same as the, well, pretty much everyone involved in the project. And it's, you know, normal and understood and everyone gets that, I'm sure. But it doesn't really help Nintendo because they need to start proving, as I've said earlier, that the Wii U is going to make money um, and of course this comes down to the old circle again the old you need people to buy your console so people could buy the games on the other hand if people need to see there are games available for people to buy the console it's that old catch-22 anyway um, as I said not particularly anything amazingly new in terms of uh, revelation or anything like that but still Curious what you guys think about this one. What do you want from Nintendo? Do you do you agree that they should just go back to software? Maybe they should just sit the Wii out? If they do, though, it's going to piss everyone off. The thing is, as most people have said, it's really hard to just go from 
Let's say they were to abandon the Wii U. Let's just assume that that was the case scenario. I'm not saying they will, but let's assume that they were to abandon it in six months. Just for example, I would say, okay, it's just not working out. We're going to abandon it, and we're going to make games on the PS4 and Xbox One. What happens then? Because let's say in four years' time, will they realistically be able to launch another console? Maybe, but it's really hard. Because then people will just remember the Wii U just sold badly. They will remember that they eventually just gave in on it and they just went to, well, hard uh, software development. Now, one option, of course, is that it could start developing certain games for the PC. Which, of course, it wouldn't really be seen as supporting a rival console. That could be one option. It could be a cash cow for them at the very least. I'm not saying they should release all games on PC, but Sega did this. Um... I started to release some of the games on PC, such as Virtual Fighter 2, at the same time as the Saturn. Well, not quite at the same time, but a little bit afterwards. And that could be another option, like 6 months, 12 months later, release it on PC. Problem is, once again, then you start getting into the risk of what games do you release and everything else as well. Plus, of course, because they're hardware with the second screen and all, it could be quite tricky to make the games work properly, so... Not really sure about that one either. That's something I'm throwing out there. I suppose if they get really desperate for cash, they could do it, but it's not really going to be a good situation for them if they have to resort to that. Anyway, this has just been a bit of idle speculation and complete silliness in some respects, but still, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about both uh, Michael's comment as well as Bob, who is, of course, the EA engineer. So anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I will see you soon. Take care and bye for now.